Hey guys, and welcome back to this week's episode of Group Therapy. By I am licensed clinical social worker, Kristen Gingrich. I'm licensed clinical psychologist, Dr. Kristen Casey. I'm licensed psychologist, Dr. Jessica Rabin. Did you just read that? I'm licensed psychologist, Dr. J. This week, we are talking all about how to make meaningful change. So settle in, take a seat, and welcome to group therapy. (laughs) I didn't read it. I do have the iPad open. I was just making sure the order was correct, actually. (laughs) Pretty sure she read it. It is January 2024. Wow. Where has the time gone? I don't know. Time isn't real. (laughs) Stop. (sighs) It's just so crazy. I mean, actually, it's not. Like, it's all, it's a construct. It is. It it just felt like 2020, like yesterday. Because it was. I know. Well, we did that whole side sesh on the pandemic skip, so. But this day, this day, today, we are talking all about meaningful change because we know with a new year, a lot of people want to start making changes in their daily lives. And so how, how do people make that meaningful change? What is meaningful change? Why is it so hard to make change? When I think of meaningful change, and I think I bring up values like literally every podcast episode, but I truly believe a meaningful change is something that truly aligns with you Mm -hmm. and the person you are or the person you want to become. Because I think so often, and I'm sure we're gonna get into this, especially in the new year, people are like, I'm gonna do X, Y, or Z, especially health related stuff, Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. they feel they, have to mm-hmm. or like everybody else is doing it so i need to do it too new like ugh, the new year new me i hate that <laughs> whatever um <laughs> that's my own like feelings yes. of jadedness not a fan not a fan because like you don't need a new year to be yourself but i think when we think of meaningful change it truly has to align with your values and the person you want to become mm-hmm. If I'm going to defend New Year, New Me <laughs> in any way, shape, or form, I would just say this. I'm lo- I lo- someone who loves experimentation. Okay. And do I like New Year? No. Do I think it's overhyped? Yes. Is it like one of the worst holidays by far? <laughs> it's like low on the hierarchy. I won't trash Valentine's Day again because I've already done that too many times on this podcast. <laughs> but... I get why people cringe and I get Mm -hmm. why people like don't, but I think on a good side and thinking about meaningful change, sometimes you don't know the impact of experimenting with new behaviors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, you just can't always know. And yet I agree with you. (laughs) I'm like, I've, I've, Maybe in some ways I've been that person, but I've definitely seen that client where they're doing something where you're like, there's no way this aligns with who you are as a person, Mm -hmm. not a shot. And maybe they just need to find out. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't mean you can't um, engage in that behavior, you know, but if, but it, you might be miserable Mm -hmm. while you're doing it. Well, and I think like, again, to slightly defend new year, new me is, is like, it feels like a reset in a way. I mean, granted, we all know that we can make change any day. You can make it on a Tuesday in September if your little heart desires. Mm -hmm. But I think for a lot of people, it's like that. It's like, oh, it is, it's completely new. I've separated Mm -hmm. myself from 2023 and now it's 2024. Um, And I think that that, for some people that is like, oh, I can restart. When the reality Mm -hmm. is, I think we all know that a Tuesday in September, we can be like, I'm doing this and I'm going to start doing this. Um, Yeah. As someone who is very logical, I get logically why Mm -hmm. January 1st or starting on a Monday, like it's easier to track. Mm -hmm. It like is Mm -hmm. a fresh start. My issue is with like the new me because I'm like, really any change you make should be aligned with who you already are or want to become. So it's not necessarily a new you. Maybe it's a, better version or enhanced version of yourself. But like, yes, I understand the like kind of crisp, like January 1st, it's a whole new year. We can, you know, start fresh. But the other thing is like, I I understand it, but also, well, no, I guess January 1st this year is a Monday, but I was going to say January 1st could be a Wednesday. So you're starting in the middle of the week. (laughs) You know, those Wednesdays are pretty solid though sometimes. (laughs) 
Yeah, but how you get to the meaningfulness for each person, I think, is an interesting question. Mm -hmm. Like, especially if it's a new behavior, like, how do you, how do you know? You have to experiment, to your point. <laughs> but that's what, that's, that is kind of what I think about. Yeah. And I, I think as therapists, we see resistance all the times in clients. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the classic things are like, especially as an adult, like making friends is tough. Or like even young adults, you see them be like, well, I don't want to go to that thing alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it's such a new behavior to roll up to a group, an organization, a meetup, a yoga studio alone for the first mm -hmm. time. And yet in your adult years, I'm ancient, about to be knocking on 40s door this year. But the amount of times you have to do stuff alone mm -hmm is just rampant. Yeah. You can't always rely that your bestie, your friend, mm -hmm. a brother or sister is going to be there. Mm -hmm. And yet you're assessing of like, what do I need to feel good? Mm -hmm. But there's a long winded way to say, I think a lot of times there's resistance in things that feel outside of who you are. I think yeah. it's a big risk for some people because they're like, is it gonna pay off? Yeah. I'm gonna Absolutely. spend all this time, potentially mm -hmm. money, my sanity, right? To do this. And I don't know if it's going to shake out. I don't know what it's going to be like. And I think life is a big experiment in my opinion, you know? So if you are experimenting, any change is going to feel effortful. It's going to feel maybe weird, but I do think it's similar to behavioral activation. It's like, you're not going to love it, mm. but it's going to probably pay off in some way or another. You'll either get more information about yourself or you'll say, okay, this is actually what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Well, and again, the time and effort put into it. Like, I, I yeah. wish that I could do one thing one time and it's stuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. the amount of work that it does take in, some things do take less work and some things take a lot of work and some things take a constant lifetime of constant work. Yeah. That mm -hmm. does become easier over time. But I think that a lot of times, you know, that first 30 days of the new year, a lot of those resolutions, goals, or things fall off because it's like, it requires that constant doing yeah. to make that stick. And even if it aligns with your values, it's, you might have more motivation in that, yep. but it does require that more intentional effort that if we're not getting that high reward very quickly, mm -hmm. then we're more apt to be like, whatever. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm yeah. done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I think a lot of times people are so focused on the outcome mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like, okay, you know, I want this end goal, but don't necessarily focus on all the steps it takes mm -hmm. to get there. And what I've seen a lot is people go like too hard, too fast. So mm -hmm. like, yeah. and I always think of exercise in the new year, but like if you have not worked out in years and you're like, my goal is to get healthy. First of all, what does healthy even mean? What does that look like? Mm -hmm. But you go from zero to going to the gym five days a week, that most likely is not going to be sustainable for you. Even if it aligns with your values and your goals, mm -hmm. because that's like any of us would burn out. You're probably gonna feel really sore. Maybe you haven't worked out in a year and you go to the gym and you're like, oh my gosh, the last time I worked out, I was able to lift X amount of pounds or able to run this yeah. distance and now I can't. And then you lose motivation. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a big barrier to making meaningful change. We have our eyes on the prize, but don't necessarily think about all the steps that go into it. And then just like you said, KBI, in that first 30 days, a lot of people fall off their new year's resolutions because what they did was like too hard, mm -hmm. but instead of adjusting like, okay, maybe five days a week at the gym wasn't great. Mm -hmm. Let me start with two, mm -hmm. two days a week. But if you said like, okay, I'm going to work out five days a week and I'm going to eat super healthy, whatever it is, the first day that you fall off the bandwagon and I'm putting that in quotes, most people get so discouraged. So they, instead of changing their go goals or the process to get there, they're just like, well, screw it. Yeah. Like, I'm just not going to do it. I guess I'm not meant to mm -hmm. work out. Yeah. And so I think that's a big barrier to making that meaningful change mm -hmm. because we look at the outcome and not 
the process and not be willing to adjust mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. process. It's a big deal. Well, I, I think sometimes because we want to make change, like we are making a choice to make a change because we want the outcome. Yeah. But, and we want that outcome so bad, whether it's around our physical health, whether it's around our mental health, whether it's around our relationships, we want that change so bad. And we, like you said, like we forget the, the small steps to get there. And we have to remember like even breaking down that bigger goal and you might be able to get to that result quicker. Like I go back to like when I started my workout journey, I started only going two days a week because I knew in my past life, I was a five day a weeker. I was like, I start out, I go hard and I knew I would burn myself out immediately. Mm -hmm. So I did two days a week for probably a month. Then I was like, I'm gonna up my membership and I'm gonna go three days a week. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I was building confidence and I was feeling good and I ran my first mile. And now I go anywhere from four to five times a week and I'm not burning myself out. I traveled here. I've only been to the gym twice in the last week, which is way lower than what I normally do. But I allow myself and I said, that's just the circumstance. Yeah. And I'm right. and like, because I've changed that mindset around that, I've said, this change doesn't end just because I had one bad week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes, again, like you said, where we fall off one time, we're like, screw it, I yep. can't do this. When the reality is, is like, I had a bad week. Okay, what can, where can I take those steps to reevaluate, re-engage and make changes even with that, even within that, that may be necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that flexibility piece is just rarely talked about. Yeah. Like you're gonna see right now, you're seeing all the January motivational videos of some guy whispering in the microphone you can make it do anything if your mindset's right if i could do it you could do it it's like raining in the background it's dark and you're like what's going on in this but why is the visual so <laughs> like, creepy why is so moody? what is going on you're whispering and then it starts like flashing and building up and there's like <laughs> a guy like chopping wood and like an explode. <laughs> You've never seen these videos? I know what you're talking about. I know what you're yes. talking about, yeah. I, I, I watch them all. Find your potential. I oh kinda, yeah, find them. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of love them. <laughs> <laughs> the cuts are always kinda, great. They hit me in a spot and I'm like, yeah. Let's go. But what's never talked about in these is like real life requires the flexibility mm -hmm. y'all are talking about. Because if everything is black and white, as soon as it flips to white and you're off the goal, it's over. That's which so is, hard. it's just, not, it's not reality. Yeah, It's mm -hmm. not reality. But I hope in us talking about this, it helps people understand that it's, it's not just on task and off task. It's like, what is the greater shift you're trying to do? Mm -hmm. And we're mentioning like, you know, maybe like moving your body more, being more physically fit. And that, those are the little things where it's like, yeah, maybe you don't go to the gym, but maybe you go for a walk. Yep. yep. Exactly. It's like, if it's just, if you're just counting, I didn't like get my reps in at the gym. That is a very rigid goal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But if you go for it, we know the data. If you go for a 20 or 30 minute walk, that's yeah. excellent for your mental health, your mm -hmm. physical health, your digestion. But yeah. again, a lot of times we set specific goals are important. I'm not knocking that, but rigid ones is where we tip over and a lot of people that I, I know, and to Jess's point, that is why within 30 days, people are like, well, I didn't go. So I missed my specific goal. I'm done. It's over. Done. But even like therapy, right? People want to start therapy because they want to heal their trauma, their mental health or anything like that. You're in therapy four months and you're like, wow, I'm, I'm starting to learn some things. And then you have a bad week and it's oh, like, God, yeah. oh, what's the point of this? Oh, or yeah, totally. you engage in a toxic behavior that you're trying to work on. Mm -hmm. Oh, well then all of this is crap because I engaged in it this one time when the reality is, is maybe for a whole week, you didn't engage in that behavior. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and I think again, like it's about that evaluation of looking at the whole picture versus this one outcome. Yes, we want this outcome, but that there are so many ways to get to that and it's messy to get there. Yeah. And even at the end of the day, we are all just humans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So true. And I think that human aspect is really important. And I'm thinking of everything that y'all are saying. And I think it takes flexibility, allowing discomfort, and even like expectation management, like, like mm -hmm. you alluded to as well. It's like, not every day is going to be perfect. I even think of the trans theoretical model of change. Um, for those of you who don't know, we use it with motivational interviewing and it's pre-contemplation, contemplation, testing myself with the E triple P here. Um, 
pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, maintenance, maintenance. As a, as and then there's, provider, I'm like, and then there's oh, like a little God. bit of relapse in there. So yeah. I think mm-hmm. to your points, you know, you yeah. might have to continually look at like, where am I at? Am I in the action phase? Okay. I'm engaging in the change. But if you are black and white, you know, with this, you might fall off. But if you kind of think about getting back in, you don't have to get back in at the pre-contemplation stage, start all over again. Yeah. It's more like maintenance and mm-hmm. relapse is part of change. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of people might not acknowledge that, mm-hmm. that you might have to kind of reorient every couple of weeks or months or years. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I also think a lot about the why of mm-hmm. somebody wanting to make the change, mm-hmm. especially if we're truly talking about like meaningful mm-hmm. change. Mm-hmm why do you want to make this change? And like going away from health behaviors, you know, I work with teens. So a lot of times we're, you know, if they're entering college age and talking about like potential careers or majors or things like that, like how many times have you heard people say like, oh, well, you know, I'm going to become a doctor because I come from a family of doctors, Mm -hmm. like, or, you know, even if that, even if that person really loves like, art and mm-hmm. like creative things, but it's just like, I just grew up in this family. So like, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. And so I think it's also really important to reflect on like, why am I wanting to make this change? Am I wanting to make this change because I feel like I have to? Do I feel pressure from uh, other people to make this change? Are other people doing it? So I'm like, sure, I'm gonna make this change as well. Or am I making it because it aligns with my values? It aligns with the person I want to become. Because I think a lot of times, and I've definitely done this as well. I'm like, oh, I should, you know, us therapists all hate that word, should do this because it will be good for me. But when I really think about it, like, why do I want to do this? And a lot of times I'm like, I don't actually want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Like, would it be good for me? Cool. Yeah, probably. But if I don't actually want to do it and the why is more like logically, I know it would be good for me, but this really doesn't fit into my life where I am right now. Or like, yeah, that's great. Like, would I want to drink a kale smoothie every morning? No. Would it be good for me? Maybe. (laughs) (laughs) But like, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to. Right. right. I don't know why that was the first thing that came to mind. But like, that's something I can think of. Like, is there benefits? Sure. Yeah. Why am I doing it? I don't know. Cause I saw some influencer on TikTok make one and I was like, oh, cool health benefits. Like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it does go back in my mind to like, we can't do everything. Correct. Like you just can't. And I do agree with the new years. You see people do that. They're, they're doing everything. They're waking up in the morning now and they're like making their kill smoothie, hating their life. They're like trying to do the early workout before work. It's the only time they have time. And it's like, yo, if you do one new sustained behavior this year, I'm not exaggerating. That could be life changing. It really yeah. can. And it's like yeah. one, but And you get the domino effect. It's like anyone who tells you, like, if you get your body moving more, it's like, then all of a sudden you're like paying a little more attention to how like foods respond to you and blah, 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 blah. But in the beginning, January 1st, you're listening to this right now. Like as therapists, we would be amazed if you had one sustained with flexibility, again, behavior change throughout the year. If you do that every year, the way that adds up oh, yeah. for your overall well being would be astronomical. Mm-hmm. But I, I know we don't do that. You're trying to have the kill, you're trying yeah. to do yoga now, now you're trying to lift weights, like and you're trying to like again get out there and do this swing dancing because you're like that prevents Alzheimer's. And it's like, yo, you can't do it all. You try to put too much on your plate. Yeah. You just, yeah. And you're you're being pulled in five different directions instead of focusing most of your energy into one area and then getting great at that and then saying, okay, I've got this down. I can manage this. I have the flexibility. Now I can add in swing dancing. Sure. And I did that and now that's incorporated and I figured out a way to perfectly integrate that in my life in what is manageable. Now I'm gonna really focus on my healing journey. Mm -hmm. And oh wow, I started my healing journey. Okay, this is a little bit harder than I anticipated. 
okay, I may need to pull back on, on swing dancing a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I need a little bit more energy over here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And again, when that gets to a place, then it's, wow, I got this. But instead we, we just try to like overhaul our lives Mm -hmm. in of the first week of January. (laughs) And then we're so disappointed. And then the impact on our self-esteem and our shame and things, when things don't work out and we're like, wow, cool. Another thing I can't do Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when the reality is, is you probably just overwhelmed you and look overwhelmed yourself, looked at the picture too big Mm -hmm. and needed to reevaluate. Okay. What can I do right now with what I have? Mm -hmm. You're talking about the concept of gaining mastery. It's yeah. so important when we're making change. Mm-hmm. That's another DBT thing. Gosh. Um, yeah, because I, I think once you gain mastery, to your point, if you could do one habit or one new skill or one new thing and you could gain mastery to a certain point where 70% of you feels like you're in a flow state, then mm-hmm. it's like, okay, add in the swing dancing. Mm-hmm. That's such a random thing. <laughs> There's good data on Alzheimer's and memory really? with dance and body movement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. Interesting. That that came from Barb, by the way. Oh, Barb. Barb. Shout, Shout out to Barb. Barb. No one actually thinks I come up with these neuroscience things. Like, what did your mom tell you, Justin? <laughs> she told me everything Hopefully I need to know. Barb's enjoying her time at her conference. Um, one thing that just came to mind, too, um, when we were just talking about the you know, making one small change. People always try to make changes January 1st, but January might not be a convenient time in your life mm-hmm. to make a change. It's like, a crappy month. The, I I crush on January all day. It's I know the you worst. Do. There's nothing yeah. good that happens in the month of January. K10 was born, was born January. and I would say that's a very good thing. Listen, Justin. It's probably at, the worst month to have a birthday. We're at war with each okay. other. Anyway, it actually, know. to be honest with you, to your point though, it is because- there's Christmas if you celebrate yeah. and then there's New Year's and then my birthday is a week later and yep. nobody gives. They're like, we already celebrated I enough. I care. Yeah. I care. I mean, I do care, but Maybe. I'm also <laughs> not really. No, He's no, just saying you. that because he feels pressured. No, but it's true. It's hard. It's hard to make change in January for some people. Well, and I'm thinking from like, we were just talking about like swing dancing classes or whatever. Like, I don't know about y'all, but January is my f- financial month that I'm like, okay, I just spent so much <laughs> yeah. money yeah. in I, December. Well, and then my husband and daughter's birthdays are both in January. Wow. That like, oh. if I was like, <laughs> I know, geez, Justin. Um, <laughs> January is a great month for everything. <laughs> Backpedaling. But like, if, you know, I was like, I heard swing dancing is really good for Alzheimer's and Alzheimer's runs in my family and swing dancing is something that sounds fun for me and aligns, but it's a financial commitment and I might not have the finances that month. Mm-hmm. Like it's probably going to be more stressful to like implement yeah. a change or, mm-hmm. you know, going back to our sustaining joy and happiness episode. And we got that really good question about like, we're happy. And then we have that dip. Mm-hmm. You might be recovering from like the holidays and yeah. not everybody finds the holiday time happy. But even if you find it stressful and now you're in January and you're like, Oh, okay. You don't have to like make any more cookies or go to any more mm-hmm. parties or mm-hmm. buy any more presents. Like it might just be a month to recharge. So then if you're feeling pressure to make changes because everybody else is doing it, that's probably not going to be meaningful or sustainable. And I, I think I talked about this, you know, last year on our new year's episode, like one of my favorite things is, and it's probably not helpful to you with your January birthday, (laughs) but I, on my birthday, my birth month, I make a goal list for that year. So my goal list works on my birth year versus the new year Mm -hmm. because I just found like that works for me, Mm -hmm. right? If I go and I try to make like, you know, I want to do swing dancing and I sign up for that in January. I live in Maine. (laughs) Half those classes are probably going to be canceled due to snow, Yeah, which with my ADHD then lacks my motivation because I'm like, oh, I didn't go again. Uh." (laughs) And it falls off versus like if I, if I pick a time of the year that works for me, Mm-hmm. And, and fits within my lifestyle, then that's going to be more apt to, to do better. Mm-hmm. And I make a goals list that I can work on through the entire year yep. versus like, okay, right now I have seven goals. I'm gonna start today, let's go. And, and, but instead I'm like, okay, like I know some of these things I'm gonna work on in the spring and some of these things I'm gonna work on like now. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it's just knowing what works for you. Yeah. I think it even matters too, like the 
the season of life you're in, mm-hmm. you know, Absolutely. I mean that, that changes things too. Like if you get sick or you're, you know, you're having a baby or you're starting a new job or something like that. I mean, the change that you've been implementing, you might have to adjust yeah. a little mm-hmm. bit compared to maybe where you were. I remember when I got sick, I couldn't exercise anymore. Mm-hmm. So hard for me. Cause I would lift four times a week. I was really into lifting weights and I had to stop and I'm just getting back into it. Can I tell you how hard it is mm-hmm. to just mm-hmm. yeah. know where I was yep. and to know that I could only lift like 20 pounds now compared to like the 130 that I could, it mm-hmm. was just, it's such a big change, but I think you have to start slow and you have to make it work for you in terms of where you're at in your life. And I like where, I like what you said about your birth, um, your birthday and using that cause that's unique and you're not basing it on other people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like other people's experiences, like on January 1st. That comparison. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes me wonder. It's a bit of the elephant in the room and we're kind of talking about it. Us as therapists, we face this a lot with exercise and dieting. Mm. It it happens a lot around January 1st, but it happens throughout the year. How can that be done in a healthy way? That's a loaded question, (laughs) Justin. Or another way is like, we're therapists, you're working with a client. Mm. What are the red flags you look for within exercise, dieting, where you're like, uh oh, like this is heading towards a problem? Yeah. Because it's, it's so common. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're talking around it, but like when th- people think New Year's resolutions, so it have to be the first two things you think yeah. of. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not to say it should be. No, I'm right. not saying yeah, that. Right, at all. right, right. No. Totally. You're talking about the commonality, like the common yeah. ones. Yeah. I have big feelings since I work with eating disorders. So I, yeah. um, so I always, and also working with teens, like I will tell any of my teens, like, and people can disagree with me on this all day, but I always explain it to them. I will not set a goal with you. If they come in and it's like my goal or one of my goals is to lose weight. I will tell them, I will not work on you with a goal to lose weight because a lot of that is actually out of your control. Mm -hmm. I will work on with you on setting goals of engaging in healthier habits that may result in Mm -hmm. weight loss. And and then I always say that perspective comes from the fact that I work with eating disorders Mm -hmm. and I'll bring parents in a lot because, you know, and I'm not saying weight loss is a bad thing for people. Um, because for many people, it can be a very healthy thing. Um, and then, you know, I always go into the why. Why is that your goal? Like, why do you want to exercise more? Why do you want to change your eating habits? And start small. So first, does exercising or does changing your eating habits sound easier to do? Yeah. We don't have to do the same or both at the same time. Which one sounds easier? And if they're like, you know, uh, eating because I... I'm in school and then I have these extracurriculars or things like that. We might start with like, you know, I would do an assessment of what are you currently eating? What are you currently drinking? So the goal might be drink more water. (laughs) Why did you look at me? No idea. There, I just my that gaze. water's unopened. And I've been drinking her water this whole time. Oh, that is water. I had one sip. It's okay. halfway done because I drank You poured your entire it. water into my cup last night. I had two sips. It's harm reduction approach. I guess you had two sips rather than zero, but still. Yes. Like, um, anyways, so, so we might st- you. <laughs> start with drinking more water or, you know, swapping out a side for a vegetable, things like that. Same with exercise. We might start with, okay, what's your baseline? And then let's start with walking. Let's do that. Um, as for red flags, you know, it. A lot of it for me is how the person feels about themselves and feels mm-hmm. about their relationship to eating yes. and exercise. Mm-hmm. So if I see somebody being very rigid, so that lack of flexibility, you know, um, I feel like I had to exercise because I ate mm-hmm. this way. If they use certain words about food, um, obviously restricting food significantly rather than making those quote unquote healthy. I don't really like the word healthy, yeah. but like it's not a balanced diet. Right. It's a very restricted diet. I mean, I could go on and on for days about it. So I'll stop right now, but those are some of the main things that come to mind. Yeah. I felt that was really helpful because yeah. I think it, it's nuance. It depends on the person, but I agree with you. I feel like the masses always go towards the scale. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it just is. They're like, I want to weigh X, X amount of pounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yet 
we know in our own bodies and in life just how many factors and variability is tied to weight loss. It's so nuanced. Yeah. I don't, and I don't want to speak for everyone, but there's no therapist I know who approves of that goal. It's tough. Uh, I, I am in recovery from an eating disorder. And I will tell you too, that like, if you just focus on the scale, you're just going to be disappointed and miserable mm -hmm. the entire way through. And I think even if you're doing it for health reasons and health benefits, and just say that there's health related factors that are influencing your decision, I think working with your doctor and making sure if you have the privilege to have a doctor and a team, that's very important. But when I think about that, you're reducing your ability to be fulfilled in this goal when you just focus on the scale. Mm -hmm. Because when you focus just on the scale, even if you focus on the BMI, which I know that there's a lot of issues with, Jess is literally rolling her eyes. Um, she tried to lift up the table. She was actually, <laughs> I was scared the table, the table was, was gonna lifting come across up. this yeah, table. Totally, totally. <laughs> yeah, to your point, agree with everything that you both yeah. said. Um, you reduce the ability to make it sustainable because as humans, yeah. you know, for people out there who are listening in every stage of your life, weight and your body shape and even your identity about, about your body is going to change over time, mm -hmm. no matter what. I mean, you could mm -hmm. go through a medical issue. You could, you know, go through puberty and then right afterwards, you'll be more apt to lose weight, gain weight, whatever that is. So weight is actually so unsustainable to Jess's point. Mm -hmm. It's it's just not a good marker in my opinion. So when I look at people who are trying to make those changes, I say, what is gonna make you feel like this is a sustainable goal mm -hmm. that's gonna make you feel good, good. about the process? Because yeah, yeah. weight loss could be a natural consequence, but it shouldn't be the overall focus because then you have more that you could control. Um, if you just focus on the scale and just say you drank a bunch of water that day. I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. you just don't know. It could, there's so many variabilities. Yeah. Well, and the other thing about focusing on the scale and a number and going back to the why that I brought up, any client I have ever worked with, eating disorder or otherwise, if I ask, why is that your goal weight? A lot of times it's like the number sounded good. Like yeah. th there is right. like, mm -hmm. it, right. I, I cannot think of a single individual I have ever worked with other than maybe saying like, well, my doctor said that would be in a healthy weight range mm -hmm. for me. That's based on the BMI and I'm not going to get into that. But like, why is it that number? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like yeah. If, if you feel good and energized and I don't know, and I focus on things outside like, yeah. You know, do you feel stronger? Do you have more energy? Do you sleep better? All of those things. If you feel the best you have ever felt, but you are five pounds more than that mm -hmm. weight, like wh that what would be the purpose right. of yeah, getting yeah. to that number? Yeah. Because, and you know, anybody who's listening that, you know, may have a spurt and goal weight or whatever, I always want you to reflect on like why that mm -hmm. number? Because really, a, a, I always say the the weight on the scale is just the gravitational force of our body on the earth. It's yeah. literally like, <laughs> like it, yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, and what one person looks at one weight and the other person looks like at that weight can be completely different. Mm -hmm. What you can look like and clothing you wear and the energy you feel at one weight and at different point in your life at the same weight is gonna look yeah. so different. And I think it's so going back to meaningful change. like really what are you seeking with that weight loss? Are you seeking more energy? Are you seeking, like, is there a medical reason yeah. that you are seeking those things? And because most often what people are actually seeking is not a number or the weight loss. It's, I want to have more energy. I yeah. want to feel more confident. I want to be happier. I want to feel more comfortable. I want to feel more comfortable, like exercise. We, we did a whole episode on that. Like, Exercise has so many mental health benefits. I want to have more mental clarity. Okay, great. Let's focus on those things and how we can get to those things outside of the scale. I'll stop my ranting now. I just really appreciate that. <laughs> I really do from both of you because it, it's, it's something I see a lot as a therapist. I experience a lot and yet it's not an expertise or specialization I hold and yet it's the most common thing. Yeah. It is the most. So if you don't talk about it, we're all just step around it. Seeing around it. I think it's important to acknowledge too, like, you know, I think people focus on weight loss because of 
you know, a variety of things, you know, when you think about privileges and all that Mm -hmm. stuff, people in smaller bodies, you know, there's a lot of privilege that might, might come with that depending on who you are and and where you're navigating in the world. Um, And might some people might disagree with me on that, but I do think that weight loss, especially with societal expectations too, is like, oh my gosh, you know, just comparison, you know, last uh, episode you talked about a lot with comparison with social Mm -hmm. media, with social media, it's just, it's hard. Mm-hmm. It's really, really hard. So I understand the reason why people want that as a goal. So I don't want to overlook that yeah. either. Yeah. Kind of shifting gears, I did want to pose this question to you all. When you think of meaningful change, and if someone's listening and is like, I want to make a change in my life, but I have no idea where to start. If you could, I know this is so hard to say like one thing as a starting point, regardless of the change in their life. What would you say, like, this is where you can start? I I get pulled towards exactly what you said before, journaling about the why. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. The why is going to be the anchor in the long haul when you're visiting friends doing a podcast, when you are, it's, it's really stormy and it's bad outside and you're like, well, what's my overall why? Like, why am I doing this? Why is this important to me? Because w- without that, I think I know people just get stuck in the rigidity. Yeah. I didn't go to the gym, so it doesn't matter. Wait a second. Is that what this is about? Yeah. Is there something magical about that gym and lifting up these weights? Because then it's like when you see behind that, you're like, no, it's a process for me to feel better in my body, to feel stronger, for fill in the blank in a different way. But there are so many ways to achieve that and add in the flexibility, which I know we've harped on a lot. But if you don't know your why, you get swept up in what we already know. All the Planet Fitness commercials, you're seeing them nonstop. (laughs) They're all over your feed right now. I know they are. But you get swept up in just what is the masses and you don't pause to be like, what does this really mean for me? I love that. I think introspection is really important. I, I'm really leaning into, I'm pretty sure it was Russ Harris. He came up with a lot of questions in the acceptance and commitment therapy workbook. And it's one of them is, you know, if you had unlimited confidence, no barriers, no obstacles, it could be confidence, it could be self-esteem, it could be happiness, anything. If you had unlimited confidence, how would you walk and talk differently? How would you treat the people in your life differently? What would, how would you treat your body differently? What would you be doing in your life differently? So to your point, just to add a little bit to what Justin said, you know, really thinking about where you're at now. And maybe if you had that confidence, how would you navigate life differently? Even if you can't act on it, what would that be? And then that could lead you down a path of maybe figuring out your why. It's a really good question. It's a really good question. I don't have a good transition. I saw you trying. I tried. I I was like, I was like, if we were going to the great member questions, I would have a great transition. Like what other questions do we like? How about this? I am going to pose a question to you all for the Google Scholars. (laughs) More (laughs) questions. Um, So I'm actually shocked we have not mentioned smart goals in this entire <laughs> episode. I had, like a, I had a fleeting thought. And then I, was I like, literally said, I was like, oh, where do we start? Smart goals. But we did. We did. <laughs> you did say. We did do that last Listen, year. We did do that it last year. Very year. I smart <laughs> goal focus. Yes. So we have heard of smart goals. We have heard of the stages of change model, which K10 brought up. Have any of you heard of the four C's approach to behavior change? Nope. It sounds familiar. I, I have, but like I can't, yeah. I can't pull it. I can't, okay. My it's, brain hurts. So this article is going to be different than ones I usually present because it's not like they did a research study, but it uh, describes a systematic process-based approach to behavior change called the four C's mm-hmm. model. And I know we talked about SMART goals last year. We've talked about the stage of change model. So if people don't like SMART goals or don't really ascribed to the stage of change model, I wanted to offer a different model. So the four C's stand for clarity, commitment, compassion, and consistency. So clarity refers to being clear that what the individual is currently doing is not working or serving them. So they want to make a change because until the individual is clear that their current approach is not working, they're unhappy in what things look like, they're not going to start to investigate that change, which 
before I read the article, I was like, oh, clarity is getting clear on your goals. But I actually really liked that thought. Like first you have to be clear that you want to make a change (laughs) because if you're not clear on that, you're never going to make a change. And so commitment after one has clarity on that, they want to make a change. They can start to commit to the changes they want to make. Um, However, a crucial part of this step is not focusing on the end goal, but rather the starting line and making small sustainable changes with compassion and Obviously, this is why I part of the reasons I picked the article, because it's about self-compassion. So not denying when you do something that does not align with the change you are trying to make, but also not being overwhelmed with that guilt or shame. Mm -hmm. So what we've talked about, like you don't make a mistake and like, well, screw it, throw it out the window. So cultivating the attitude that you are a valuable, valuable human, just like every other human, minimizing your self-criticism Because we know from research, and we didn't actually bring this up, that if you tell yourself like, oh, you're lazy, you need to get to the gym, we think that's going to motivate us. And it's not. Criticizing yourself into doing something actually is counterproductive. So cultivating that self-compassion when you make a mistake, not saying like, oh, I didn't make that mistake, but just acknowledging, okay, that didn't align with my goals, but tomorrow is a new day. And then consistency, acting in alignment with our values and goals cultivating community around us, which I love that they pulled in community and creating routines Mm -hmm. that ultimately align with our goals, which I think speaks to what we talked about already, but also in our joy and happiness episode, how can we incorporate these things into our daily routine? Um, I also wanted to note that the four C's is not supposed to be rigid. It's not like first you get I mean, yes, clarity is going to come before commitment, Mm -hmm. but like it's interchangeable. Like, Mm -hmm. so it's not like once you're committed, then you act on self-compassion. Like they're going to ebb and flow. And it was originally developed for more of a health behavior change. Mm -hmm. But I mean, just hearing that, I think it can be applied to all types of change that you're trying to make. I I really like the aspect of community that you named. Mm -hmm. Because it's funny, it's like, it might seem like I'm arguing against myself of like, you have to do a lot of things alone. (laughs) Like, and I do, I I stand by that in the initial, but I also know like, again, stereotypically the thing coming to my mind is like when you first go to that gym, you know, and you know, no one. Yeah. And then I am in agreeance that there's something about when you walk in and you know, Tracy's over here, you know, Julio's (laughs) over there. And there's these people that greet you and know you and see you. It's a completely different feel. And again, I'm not taking anything away from the people who love to like work out alone and get in and get out. But I think for most sustained behaviors we do, there is a community Mm -hmm. piece or a people know me piece. Mm -hmm. Even the familiarity too. Yeah. Right. That's what I found a beneficial of sticking to that is I, I chose because I know, like, again, I know myself. I know I needed to work on some of my like physical health things. And so I started going to the gym, but I know that I have zero accountability to doing it by myself. Mm -hmm. I'd walk in and be like, oh, I did 20 minutes, bye. (laughs) Um, Which is great, but I knew that like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't stick to that. Like that would be like, that would be my, my all the time. And Mm -hmm. I knew that that's not what I needed. Mm -hmm. And so instead I chose a group class, which, you know, worked really well for me is working really well. And now I'm starting to really make friends. And we had like what we call hell week, which is like Mm. more intense workouts. And I was like, guys, we got it. We got a pact. Mm -hmm. We got a pact together during this because this is miserable. Like, this is not great. Mm -hmm. Um, But like, then you create friends and like, you're like, oh yeah, you're showing up to this 12 o'clock class. Oh great. I'm actually coming up 415, but I'll move my class Mm -hmm. to come with you. So you have someone with you in a way. And for ADHD, that body doubling is helpful. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, but I also go to classes many times by myself because I had to tell myself like, I gotta, I gotta do this. If I constantly just wait for someone, I'm never going to do it. And that was Mm -hmm. like, I started going to concerts by myself. I started doing all of that because I realized like if I'm constantly waiting for someone else to do something, I'm never going to create the change, which was, I want to get out of my house more. I Mm want to do those things. Mm -hmm. And you know, I go to concerts by myself. I go, I eat dinner by myself because I'm like, oh, I want to eat at this place. Mm -hmm. 
pretty liberating. It yeah. is. It's it definitely, I will admit, it's weird at first. Yeah. Sure. But then it's like, you know, I can sit there, I can read a book, I can scroll my phone, I'll watch enjoying my never ending breadsticks. Like Yeah. Yeah. It is interesting when I first read the part about community, I was like, yes, that is so important. My first thought went to graduate school though. Like, cause if we think about change, yeah. like, okay, going to get a advanced degree mm -hmm. is a big change. Mm -hmm. The outcome is obviously becoming a licensed mental health professional at some point. If I did not have my cohort, there is no, no way <laughs> I would have no. made it through absolutely my PhD not. program. No. Like, no. No, no, like, and it's just, and I know that's like a very different type of change, but it's a goal mm -hmm. and like, yes. it, but it is, yeah. it is a change mm -hmm. you're making. You're, you're going from having a bachelor's degree or maybe being working for years and then decide to like, Hey, I want to do something more or different depending on how you think of it. But that community was the thing that got me through. Mm -hmm. It's so um, true. And like, then I was reflecting more like any change I think I've ever like, made in my life like I've never done alone even if the only community I have is my husband mm -hmm. like they, yeah it, it's, it's going to be so much harder to make that meaningful change mm -hmm. if you're trying to do it alone at least from my perspective I don't know things might come off the top of your head yeah. that you're like because I'm even thinking even if you're doing it alone because I'm reflecting I'm just in deep reflection right now all the changes that I've made I've at least talk to my friends or family about, mm -hmm. you know, like, I, yeah. and they've been yeah. like, Hey, how's it going? Or, you know, did you hit your walk goal to like, whatever that is, you know, mm -hmm. that back and forth is so helpful. Cause if you're doing it alone then you're like, who's even watching me? Yeah. Who's it, who, not that you need an audience, but <laughs> or like, who can I talk to about this? Exactly. Yeah. But I think this is why, and I know we've been so hyped on exercise diet, all the things. Cause that yeah. that's the elephant in the room, yeah. but I, even something like reading books, you join the book club. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But it, it, it exists for a reason because it's the accountability and you get to share, like you read, we're gonna read these two chapters this week. And mm -hmm. it's like, a lot of us in the ether can be like, oh, I'm gonna read more. But it's just different yeah. when you're like mm -hmm. in a group of people and you're like, yo, what did you think about that? Yeah. yeah. And it like pulls you in to have the conversation or again, be known or seen in the journey through whatever. Mm -hmm. So true. The polls. We got, We're gonna that do was the a polls. great transition. Top 10 transition right there. We're gonna Direct. do the, the, the polls. polls. Direct and ready. The polls, I'm not creative today. So we asked you about meaningful change. Uh, the first poll question was, tell me what gets in the way the most when you're trying to make a meaningful change. Negative self-talk, unhelpful beliefs about yourself, time or energy. Going with time, yeah. But so it that was any. so that any. was my gut, and granted, I haven't looked at them recently because mm -hmm. I picked time for me. I would pick time, but, but yeah. I feel like when I clicked it, it was like not time was actually lower. Oh, but I don't know if what do you that, think that was yeah. early on. Yeah, <laughs> stop cheating. Uh, it could be any though. Uh, yeah, yeah, it could be anything. Can. Yeah, I'm just gonna go time. Okay, time was actually actually the lowest. Yes. Time was at nine percent. <laughs> Nine. Nine. The 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 highest one was unhelpful beliefs about myself. Oh, wow. Okay. That, yeah. 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 Second highest was energy. Third was negative self-talk. Wow. Okay. And time was nine percent. Yeah, I was shocked too. I was really shocked. Well, in some ways that's good because people feel like they have they time have to make the change. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. yeah. Or or yeah, exactly. Um, have you heard of the stages of change model that we talked about before? The trans theoretical model, the pre contemplation, contemplation, yes, no, not sure seems sus. So. <laughs> it seems sus is the highest. <laughs> um, not sure. Cause I feel like people probably have heard of it, but maybe don't know the name. I think yes. No is actually the highest at oh, 48%. We were all wrong. This is all shocking to me too. Yeah. <laughs> have we ever all been wrong on a poll? No. Where we picked all the different answers? We're all wrong a lot. <laughs> yeah. That's about the yeah maybe yeah. not on the polls though. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I want you to think of a change that you're trying to make in your life. What stage of the trans theoretical model are you in? Pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, or maintenance. So I also added in there what it might mean. So pre-contemplation means like, no, not even remotely thinking about a change. Contemplation is like, eh, maybe I'll consider it. Preparation is planning. Like, let me plan to make this change. Action is doing, and the maintenance is keeping that going. Where contemplation. Do you think I was thinking prep, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, prep is actually it planning. People are planning changes actively. What is meaningful change? Change that is connected to a higher purpose, 
connected to our values, might be difficult, or all of the above? All of the above. Yeah. <laughs> all of the above. I like, it. like Yeah. I like it. Yeah, all of the above was 74, and then connected to your value, values was 21%. So Okay. And then the last question, tell us what you're hoping to change. Tell me. Mm. Tell us my job. Oh. Yes. My Maybe thought. I can relate. Yeah. I can relate. My thoughts. Not now. Not to, now. to yeah, her current job not listening. Now. Likes her, yeah. yeah. Not now. We don't know if she likes the podcast, but we know she likes her actual job. <laughs> um, my thoughts, negative self-talk. Um, I want to believe that I have value. I love oh. that. It's a really good one. Uh, Work-life study balance. My diet. A lot of it was job related, occupationally related, mm. my physical health, my ability to be vulnerable and express my needs. Okay. That's a really big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the way the world works right now. I felt that. Mm. Um, I'm hoping one day to be in a romantic relationship that is healthy and life-giving. Life-giving. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Work-life balance, perception of myself, procrastination, social anxiety, mm -mm. Um, to stop making decisions out of fear. Okay. Living authentically as a queer person. Felt that too. Sleep hygiene slash routine. It's not sexy, but it's good for you. Oh my, it's so good for you. Yeah. My fear of being home alone. A lot of them were similar though. Like a lot of vulnerability, a lot of being kinder to myself, setting boundaries. Mm -hmm. You guys, there's so many, like I'm still scrolling. Know what I love about that? And I know you didn't read all of them. Yeah. None of those that you listed were what we traditionally think of in the new year, the health and exercise. Which doesn't, for what it's worth, yeah. it doesn't surprise me about our listeners. That's yeah. true. Because yeah. I think our listeners, shout out to y'all, but you are, you're very thoughtful. You're very reflective. Yeah. You're nuanced. I mean, you're listening to a mental health podcast. Yeah. yeah. But I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate the variability. Relationship with food was one of them though. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Sure. No, but, but I mean. Good point though. Justin makes, makes a good point. I yeah. would argue that relationship with food is different than saying, I want to mm -hmm. yeah. lose mm -hmm. weight. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like I, like that would be a goal in therapy. I'd be like, great. Let's, great. let's yeah. work roll. on that. Right. Yeah, let's roll. Let's roll. Let's roll. Let's get it rolling. <laughs> let's get rolling on the group member questions. Come on, Jess. <laughs> let's go, Jess. We've let's got one good go. transition. Yeah. One good one. One good one. Okay. As always, thank you for your questions. I did something to your iPad. Okay. Anyways, so the first one <laughs> comes from Amanda from the Canadian East Coast. Hmm. So up- Basically Maine. Yeah, basically by Maine. Oh. So it's probably really cold there right it's now. only four hours to Montreal from my house. I was literally thinking I West love Coast. Montreal. Fun fact. So cool. So Amanda says, I want to change my negative self-talk. However, that voice is so loud. I'm in my mid thirties. Is it too late to change or how do I change it? KBI is shaking her head. You I need to say words. <laughs> I don't think it's ever too late to change that. Um, you know, it's just, again, it's building that mindfulness. It's building that peace. My favorite thing, about it, this again, what is what works for me, whether or not, like I give my, my internal self-talk has a name to it. Mm -hmm. His name is Frank. I picture him as Frank Gallagher from Shameless. Oh my gosh. <laughs> It's really fun time. So when Frank starts talking shit in my head and starts crapping on me for like my goals or my motivation or things like that, I look at him and I'm like, Frank, like, and I, I kind of personify it in mm -hmm. a way mm -hmm. because it helps separate it because it's not where I want to be. Yep. Mm -hmm. That is not where I want to be. That's not the mindset. So I create this kind of character that I can kind of have this conversation with in a way. And that is works for me, may not work for everybody else, but I don't think it's too late to change. And it's not, it's never too late to get curious into that and find out, okay, where is that coming from? Is that voice too? I always ask, is that voice someone you, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, is that maybe your mom's voice or your dad's voice in your head? Um, is it like getting curious in that and seeing where that's coming from? But I don't think it's ever too late to change that negative self-talk. Mm -hmm. It's not. And the only thing I would add is like, it's really uncomfortable, again, to cultivate a new and different voice. Yeah. Yep. I also yep. very much believe it is necessary for most people, mm -hmm. meaning you're going to feel uncomfortable when you pause and give yourself credit or encouragement or compassion about something you did today. Mm -hmm. It's going to feel uncomfortable to sit with the inner child and be like, how would I treat them 
in this setback that I had today. It's really uncomfortable to do something different when what's familiar is to berate yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's to me, that's the turning point in acceptance that this is going to feel uncomfortable, difficult, kind of what's the point, but everything KBI said, I think is spot on the path. And almost always it is someone's voice. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. so rare that it's no, that this reminds you of no one. Yep. And it, again, not impossible, but most of the time it's, yeah. it's someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the only other thing I would add is I feel like the first step is being aware how often you actually talk critically to yourself. Yeah. Cause a lot of times we don't even, you don't even recognize know. how much. And then, and this can be tedious. And I know a lot of people may not buy into it or be like, that is way too hard. But like, if you catch yourself having a negative self-talk, pause and challenge that. Mm -hmm. Like, even if it's like not super related, cause you might truly believe that negative self-talk, but say you said something negative about the way you look name something that you like about your personality. If you mm -hmm. can't think of something physical or, you know, if you're like, oh my gosh, I really screwed up on that today. Try to identify something like that you did well yeah. that day. And because we don't practice talking kindly to ourselves. No, no. And so that's a habit that you have to build and it is hard. But if you start countering those negative thoughts, but you have to first recognize how often you're saying yeah. those things. Cause it's so true. I don't know. I'm sure all of us today have had negative thoughts about ourselves and we don't even fully know all of the negative thoughts we've had about ourselves. Totally. And I, it's a Kristen <laughs> stare off. What is happening right now? I just stare for, like, for like a really long time. And this is why people say your podcast is never going to make it. <laughs> too many people. Every person's like, this is way too many people for a podcast. Y'all are stupid. No, what are you going on about? Is that your negative self-talk, Justin? I th I th it might be, yeah. or it might be things I've heard. Who knows? I just think that like one of, the, where's my brain going? My brain just glitched. Um, like I always say too, I always say too that like, you would not tolerate someone talking to you in the way that they talk to you. Like if Justin talked to me the way that sometimes I talk to myself internally, I would probably punch him in the jaw. I knew that's what you were going to say. Yeah. But that's, but that's the reality is like mm -hmm. most of the time, like I tell myself sometimes I'm a shit mom. If Justin would come to me and tell me that I'm oh a shit God, mom, can you imagine? Justin would be, have a knee to the groin in Miss Congeniality style. Like, like Good movie. because I wouldn't tolerate that. Yeah. I wouldn't, but like somehow we, we tolerate that in ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we think that that's okay. Mm -hmm. When the reality is, is nine times out of 10, we would never tolerate that from no. someone else. And that's also a, a change that I created in my own brain. That's why I personified mm -hmm. him to Frank Gallagher. Yeah, That's so smart. To go back to Jess's point too, about the, um, the challenging it. I, it is a CBT technique. Just bear with me. I promise it's not going to be that bad. But I think about catch it, check it, not change it. I actually say alter it yeah. or add to it. So if you're thinking like, I, I I can't work out today or I, I just can't, I, or I can't work out in general. I always say, how could you add to that to make it more rational or how could you add to that to make it more reasonable or more balanced? So when people are like, I can never work out, I, I only could work out during these times. I know we're talking about working out <laughs> again. Um, I always say, can you not work out or can you not work out today or this week or this month, you know, add to it to make it more balanced. Cause I think those thoughts, like you're telling, you're like, you're saying, they do affect you and they could technically be extreme sometimes, yep. you know? Mm -hmm. So I do think challenging it is really helpful. Not a big CBT person, but that's one thing that I think is helpful when it comes to the self-talk. Mm -hmm. So Nick from Colorado asks, what are some ways to accept emotions as they are? Um, and then he also added, he consistently engages in ne negative self-talk. So it's hard for him and that's a change he wants to make. So how can you accept emotions? It's gotta be some belief that they're necessary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think you have to start from that because I, I think a lot of people come at it of, again, there are good emotions, there are bad emotions, which I've talked at length that they're just emotions. They serve there a are purpose. no 
good or bad. They serve a purpose. We love inside out as therapists. We actually have to watch it once a week or you, they just take away your license. Yeah. They're like, if you don't watch Pixar's inside out once a week, just straight to jail. Some, someone's going to believe that that's a lie, but and inside out two is coming out Woo-woo. this year, Woo-woo. 2024. Yeah. I think it's mandatory. Every therapist has to see Inside Out too. An opening night. An opening, <laughs> An opening night. Just a oh bunch God. of therapists would be like, Could you wait, imagine if we do this. a podcast review? <laughs> oh my God. Could you, like, that makes me want to, like, be like, reach out to, I'm in a therapist group in Maine, and I'm like, guys, we should rent out an entire theater and just put a bunch of mental health providers in one theater to watch there's this movie with our notepads. There's something terrifying about that. Yeah. <laughs> It's going to be, well, then you're not sitting in a room full of little kids. Like, that's my only problem. True, true, it's true. like, I don't want to sit true. in a movie theater with little kids. I did that for Super Mario, and it was incredible. Because it, it was, was Super Mario. Mario. <laughs> it was no. a good Super Mario was a great I know, movie. I know. But I know. anyways, it, foundationally, that you have to understand that. I think none of us like being stuck really in any emotion for that long. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that can be a sign of depression or anxiety or, you know, name it. But... There is utility to why you feel the way you do, Mm -hmm. but there's also ways to pivot out of that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think if you deny that emotions are necessary, you remove the human value of being human. I mean, literally. I I mean, I don't know any other species that at least we know of that has emotions that we could actually communicate Mm -hmm. um, in, in a way that we do you know, animals communicate in different ways. But I do think too, like with emotions in general, it is, I always say like, it's not good or bad, it it is. And I think for me, the the defining moment where I was actually able to acknowledge not all emotions are bad. um, I think I I can't remember. Yeah, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Mm -hmm. Frankl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I refer to that book a lot because if you have ever read the book, I don't want to give it away, but he's in a really, really, really incredibly stressful situation. And I think, you know, if he were to say, this is all bad, I'm feeling terrible this entire time, who knows what could have happened, you know? And I think really just acknowledging, like, let me kind of try to work through it and try to not accept or try to not agree with the emotions, but maybe accept that they're there. Mm-hmm. DBT. Again, I don't know. I think our brains just work that way. That's kind of wild to think about. I don't know what we need to call out over here or something. I didn't didn't think that we were, I didn't think I was that DBT oriented, to be honest with you. I was a DBT facilitator for like three years. Maybe that's why, but anyways. (laughs) (laughs) Whenever Jess gives side eye, I'm like, yeah. I had a a professor that was always like, it's just wine with different labels. Like everything, because you described something that was done in act that I know is also Ed Lirian. And Ed Lirian (gasps) came before act. It's acting as if. You're right. And so, but I think there's so much overlap (laughs) in every form of- Oh yeah, absolutely. And they call it their own unique little names Mm -hmm. and we get in our little camps. Just repackage. Re-repackage. Like my, I always say mindfulness-based cognitive behavioral therapy is like ACT and CBT. It kind of is. Had a baby. It absolutely (laughs) is. Had a baby, yeah. Had a baby and (laughs) there it is. Anyways, so Heather from Pennsylvania and Jordan from Maine asked very similar questions. So I wanted to group them together. So both my states. I yeah, know. Actually, this was just KBI submitting <laughs> two questions, the okay. same question. Um, but Heather asked, do you have any tips for how to put a plan into action? I always feel like I plan and have good intentions, but I can't just follow through. And then Jordan said, how do you make the jump from contemplating to planning the actions? I can think forever, but then never actually act. Any thoughts or tips? To action yep. is like the first, as you suggested, the first easiest step. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The f- the first simplest easiest step forward of what seems like something. And I like to ask, like, what's something you can do today? Mm-hmm. Especially when I'm having like a midday session with someone or a morning session. My clients know I hate the morning. <laughs> Some of y'all love the morning. I'm, I try my best to show up in the morning. I'm not a morning person. But even asking in that is like, if you were going to make progress or do something today, what would you do? Mm-hmm. What is possible? Yeah. But I think, again, some people get very zoom out, big picture people, and they can't see the nuance of like, action is just doing the first step. The first thing. So like, like you're trying to join the book club. I'm thinking of new examples now, but you're trying to do the book club. It's like, if you wanted to join a book club and increase your reading, what would be 
a first step you can think of you could do today. Mm-hmm. For a lot of people, it's like, get on Google. Yep. Yeah. Little Look clubs up. near me. Yep. But that, that is the first step right. of like, mm-hmm. just see what's near me, what's around me. Because mm-hmm. to Jess's point before, if you're just focused on that outcome, like that end of, I got to show up to the book club, you know, it's hard. I always think too about like uh, increasing socialization or connection. If you're texting your friends and then they can't hang out or something happens, you're like, okay, I can't do that goal today, but you texted. Mm-hmm. There's the step yeah. that's right. a, that's technically yeah. action. You're yeah. Anything that you could observe behaviorally is technically an action. Or if you're changing your self-talk, it might be more internal. So I really liked this question. So anonymous from undisclosed location. I like that we say that now. When they like to undisclose. undisclose, it sounds very secretive. Serious. <laughs> <laughs> Can you talk more about the lapse relapse stage? I personally think this is one stage that is very difficult to get out of because I think I have failed once or multiple times, and then I don't have the motivation to restart. Well, I, I think the idea. I think the problem is is that when we have a setback or relapse or whatever you want to call it, we have to think we have to pop right back into it exactly where we were at. Instead of kind of like we talked about before where we reevaluate what caused that setback. Mm -hmm. Was it that I did too much too fast? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not going to hop back in it and do too much too fast. I need to reevaluate. Maybe I need to take it a big step back and then step back into it. Mm -hmm. And I think... sometimes that's the hard part is we constitute that as failure Mm -hmm. when we have to take a step back when that is when we have to separate that from that because it is not failure it is reevaluating what is working and not working and that goes for anything right i come from the sud world and you know the term relapse is i've had like this i've had this setback and it's like okay so what didn't work what 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 caused us to get there and how do we make those steps to get back up on that horse Mm -hmm. and you might be walking alongside that horse for a little while and then okay we have that motivation to hop back up on and I think that that's where we have to just reevaluate that failure doesn't have to mean like it doesn't have to mean failure like relapse doesn't have to mean that Mm -hmm. and that it's just like okay I just need to reevaluate what worked and what didn't work because mm-hmm. you're alluding to the fact that healing isn't linear. Yeah. I mean, exactly. it's, it's just up and down, up and down, up and down, you know, because if it was a linear path, like, of course, you yeah. know. And when we're making change, you like if we're doing one new thing, this is a new thing. You have you've never done this thing before in this oh, situation. True. So yeah. until you even hit that first year mark, you haven't even done this thing in October yeah. yet. Right. Right. Yeah, you, yeah. you like you haven't even done this thing on a Tuesday yet. Mm-hmm. Like you have to look at that and say, OK, like if I start in January. I like get to October. Oh, crap. I forgot that October is the craziest month of the year for me. Well, you've never gone through that. And so maybe October is just a harder year. And so I have to reevaluate because you've never gone through that before. Mm-hmm. And so and that's with any life like shift. And, and so we just have to remember that relapse setback doesn't mean failure. Yeah. So Anonymous from the United States asks, how can I not feel guilty about a meaningful change I know I need to make? For context, I'm going to be coming out to my parents in a few months, and I know that will probably lose, I will probably lose contact with them. How can I remind myself that this is a change that is best for my mental health and safety? I'm just feeling validation that one, this is something that in your core being, you're feeling pulled is good for you. So I want to validate that feeling. The other thing I'm feeling behind that is like a sorrow for you, like a really real grief. If you know that's true. Like, I think that just felt like a gut punch for all of us. Yeah, I think we, we took a moment of reflection for that one. Because I think... I would want you to be able to hold that that grief is going to be there for you if you're predicting it's going to be and that that's okay it doesn't mean this was a wrong decision it doesn't mean it's not in the totality right for you but i think there are many examples coming out is a great example where you're doing what's best for you in the long run and in the short run it might feel like shit. yeah yeah, yeah. so well worded 
Yeah, there's a lot of grief with coming out for most people, which is really unfortunate. And I think too, it's like you almost have to choose yourself over a lot of the relationships in your life, which is a really hard decision to make. It is really hard to say, my identity is going to get in the way of these friendships, relationships, activities, jobs, whatever it is. Um, And it's tough. It's really, really, really tough. And I think with the guilt that you feel, I think I would even take it a step further and even get curious about if it feels like shame. You know, is it deeper than that? Does it, you know, you coming out and really coming out to people that are supposed to love you, you know, that might feel really uneasy. And it might feel like you're you're doing something wrong or there's something wrong with you when essentially there really isn't. So I really appreciate that you even voiced the question because I think it's something that at least I've experienced too. You know, you lose a lot of friends and family. You know, people start to look at you differently, start to treat you differently. Like, you know, if you have friends that, or family members that, you know, just say they're straight, they might think, oh my God, are they hitting on me? Like all the, like all these weird feelings that people might feel. Um, but I just want to acknowledge that just having the courage to even ask that question mm-hmm. and to even go there shows a lot about you wanting to make that change mm-hmm. just in general. Um, so I don't really have the best advice really, just knowing that other people in the community might feel similarly to you. And it's kind of like a rite of passage, which I hope, I, I wish it just wasn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The only thing I would add is at the end of the day, I think you already answered your own question. You know, this is best for your mental Mm -hmm. health and safety. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming the guilt is probably, and I could be wrong related to the loss of connection, but if you know, this is what is best for you, you have to follow Mm -hmm. that gut and it can be what's best for you. And simultaneously you feel that guilt for a short period of time or a long period of time, but that does guilt does not mean it was a wrong decision. We've got time for one more. One more. Oh gosh. There's so many good ones. Oh, no pressure, Jess. I know. Pick the best one. The best. And we'll know. I'm not going to say pick a perfect one. You are going to. He said perfect so much on this trip. (laughs) Yeah. I know it's out of sarcasm, (laughs) but I love it. I'm doing my own exposure to use the word perfect as much as possible. It makes me flinch every time. For context, Justin hates that word. Yes. It's it. Oh, my gosh. There, There have been so many good questions about making meaningful change. So, um, just pick one at random, no pressure. No. Okay. So to get sentimental for all of us. So Stephanie from Washington asks, what has been some of the hardest changes you have made in your life and what has helped you along the way with these changes? (laughs) <laughs> as much as you all feel comfortable sharing, because I'm sure there's changes we have made that maybe we don't feel comfortable sharing. I would say it, it like it was the hardest and easiest change for me was going no contact. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. the mm-hmm. easiest decision for me to make, but it was the hardest change to come through emotionally. Um, It was easy for me to be like, I'm done with this. Mm -hmm. Um, But hardest to realize, like the the emotional piece was the hardest in like, even to this day, like I still have moments where I'm like, oh, I wish I could send these things and I wish, and it's a constant, you know, moment of like, do I reach out? Do I have this? And and then that reminder of no, it's not. Um, But I would say that for me was probably like the hardest change um but again laced with so much easiness Mm -hmm. was there anything that helped you kind of get through it um second part of the question i think i I think it was i was at my end of the rope and that was what made it easy it was just like i the incident that led to it was the icing on the cake um but i think you know what got me through it was Honest, so I went no contact as I became a new mom. I went no contact six days after having Oliver. Mm-hmm. That's what helped. I had no time to focus on that mm-hmm. because I had a child who needed his mother. Mm-hmm. And that was what he was going to get. And, and that helped me even process that in the moment um, because I knew that that's what was needed. Um, but again, I had supportive family, like my dad was really supportive, my brother, um, friends who got it. But yeah, that was that was probably like, again, the hardest and easiest. Community. Yes. 
There's so many changes that I've made that have been hard. Um, the most relevant and recent one that I've talked a lot about on the podcast was like my health issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had to make guys so many changes about my life, what I've ate, you know, how I look at my body, how, how my functionality has changed. I was even saying this morning, like my brain literally does not function the same way that it used to. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, I had to make a lot of changes in how I treat myself mm -hmm. um, and self-compassion, even though it was part of my dissertation, I suck at it. I really do. I just suck at it. And that's why I researched it because I wanted to know more about it. But um, I think the hardest thing for me was changing the way that I talk to myself and in terms of expectation management of how I could function every day and the things that I'm actually able to do. Um, and in that, one of the pinnacles for me was actually asking for help. Um, mm -hmm. Holy shit, was that hard? Mm -hmm. You know, my partner has been so great in helping me, but now he'll be like, what do you need? Do you need anything? <laughs> what else do you need <laughs> help with? Independent Kristen. I literally have functioned in survival mode my whole life being very independent just from trauma and everything like that. So it's very difficult for me to feel like I need people, even though I love people, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so the thing that's helped me the most with that is actually having, I'm gonna get emotional. I should fix something less emotional. Um, it's okay. This is not helping. <laughs> <laughs> um, having friends like you, it's like help through it. Yeah. So, Justin goes. I know. Yeah, it's okay. I, re I really appreciate you sharing that. And I, I feel this all the time. <laughs> like I'll start talking about something. First, I, I appreciate you authentically bringing yeah. yourself yeah. into this more than anything. Thanks. Um, but I feel that all the time. I'll start talking about something and I'll be like, oh, I'm good on this. And all of a sudden you feel that way I pressure. Literally, like, oh. yeah. I was like, oh, this is so easy. Cause I was gonna talk yeah, my, about yeah. my bisexuality. I would, <laughs> I would ball my eyes out if that was it. So I'm like, oh, this medical thing. I'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was gonna say romantic relationships ending. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's by far been the hardest changes. And I know it's not what we think of when we think of New Year's, New Me and all that stuff, but uh, breakups are always hard. Mm -hmm. So hard. It doesn't matter what's going on in them. It doesn't matter who did what or whatever. It's, it's very difficult when you share your life with someone. And even when you know it's for the best, it changes everything. The relationships you have, where you go, the memories, um, and what's helped get through that is just being open and honest with people in my life, mm -hmm. sharing that experience, being in therapy um, has helped a lot. I was going to talk about how hard yoga is for me <laughs> as a very inflexible person, but in reality, the totality, like emotional and otherwise is always romantic relationships ending. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think one of the similar to KBI, it was easiest, like when I made the decision, but hardest, like going through it was moving away a thousand miles for college. I was 17 because I have a late August birthday. And like, I knew I wanted to get out of New England, but I literally moved away from everything I knew. And then I've stayed there. That's like, hard. and I mean, yes, like my husband and I met at college, like, and I've gained a support system, but moving away that far, even though like 17 year old me was like, this is great. Yeah, I, got this in the <laughs> I get to be in the South with the, the nice bag. weather out away from the, you know, snow. Yeah. Cold. But what came in that, and I've talked about this on the podcast. I like, don't talk, uh, talk with anybody from high school other than two people. And that change happened that first summer after college. Cause I moved away. So I guess this is another big change is like losing a lot of mm -hmm. the hard. core group of friends. Um, you know, and I don't think I've mentioned this, but my sophomore year, I considered moving back to New England because some of my closest friends had decided to transfer. And so like I was restarting and things like that. And the things that helped me get through were that community, like focusing on the friends I did have. I got a job um, at college. And even though like the people I worked with weren't necessarily like other students or people my age, like it helped me get through with that obviously my husband we met when i was 19 and like that relationship to help me decide okay yes like even though i don't have my family and i still don't have my family mm -hmm. near me that is hard i, I know yeah. you can relate but like creating that friendship my my new family and things like that have really um helped and also reminding myself especially like for college and then grad school like this is what i want to do with my life so like there were 
goals that I was trying to achieve. Y'all, it's been real and it's been fun and it's also been real fun. <laughs> but I have to say this, and this is truly meaningful. Thanks so much for coming down to Boca. Oh, I really, what the fuck? it's, I it's been cry. so, <laughs> it's been so different. It's been so connecting in a different way. We're usually hiding from each other on Riverside. Again, KBI's back with her ice machine. Don't hate on the ice machine. It's just it's, really loud. I know. It's just I know. different. I don't know why it started acting up. We're going we're gonna to get you a new <laughs> one, I but I, we know off. you love it. But no, I, I really appreciate y'all coming down. It's been so fun to be here yeah. in person. And we hope y'all enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. We hope these episodes, maybe they hit a little different, a little oh. harder. But no matter what, rate, review, subscribe, share it with somebody. We'll see y'all next time in group therapy. Bye. Peace.